Great. They are uh, Apollo's Prima Vista, and what's the third one? Hello, folks, and welcome to Live Play Sports.tv's coverage of high school football from Valencia High School. Tonight, we have a matchup the visiting Thousand Oaks Lancers taking on the home team West Ranch High, also of Valencia, sharing this field with their rivals. Sponsors tonight Prima Vista Tutoring and also Apollo's Barber Shop. Also, Brain Balance, the Achievement Center of Valencia. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan with your play-by-play. -play. You see the band lining the field. Big night, homecoming night here in Santa Clarita Valley. Still have plenty of sunlight, but we will be playing under the lights shortly. There's the commuter traffic in the back of your screen as we wait for the home team with the customary burst through the logo. The Wildcats of West Ranch. Coming in with a 2-0 record, great start to this season. They did have a delay in week two. The Flyers canceled the game with Burroughs High of Burbank. But they are coming out right now, the home team. Led by number 10, their quarterback, Colton Mitchell, the transfer from Texas, who has given this team a whole new look. You'll hear his name plenty tonight. And it seems like so far this season, each week, new weapons have emerged for the Wildcats. Whether it's the Camacho brothers, who are actually the old mainstay weapons from last season. But we'll cover names like Juan Glasgow, who made his presence known in the big win over St. Genevieve of Panorama City last week. There's a look at the last three games. Opening up with a 55-7 blowout of Simi Valley. Then they had the cancellation. And taking care of business with a 39-12 route of St. Genevieve. Colton Mitchell, seven TD passes, two interceptions on the year. In week one, it was LaRon Huff with a big rushing output. And there you see the last three games for 1,000 Oaks, starting with two losses, finally getting on track with a win over Highland of Palmdale, 31-14 last week. They also have a bit of a new look. They have a quarterback transfer from Rigetti High in Santa Maria. Chase Artopius, number three. We'll take a look at him tonight. That's the Lancers in the white jerseys with the green trim and the Wildcats, of course. Set for kickoff, here it is. And they'll take it at the 10 yard line. Short return. And here comes the offense of the Lancers to start the game. We mentioned the junior Chase Artopia, 6'2", 196, decent size, also plays basketball. Artopius, been a varsity starter since the middle of its freshman year. On the keeper with some positive yardage and nice ankle tackle by number two, Ryan Camacho, one of the most versatile players on the field for West Ranch. Camacho with his biggest rushing game of his high school career last week. He, of course, the twin brother of Jovan Camacho. Camacho. 
The leading rusher for Thousand Oaks, however, in the backfield. There's the pitch to number 23. As he barrels forward, you are looking at Angel Baker, the senior. It'll be second and six is the call from the PA announcer. Gain of four by Baker. Shotgun formation, four wide out spread. They stay on the ground. Baker looks like he may have lost the ball. Into the pileup go the Wildcats and the referee with a signal. First turnover of the game emerging from the pack for West Ranch. Number 26, Jake Wheels, the senior with a big recovery. So on the second carry for Baker, he coughs it up and West Ranch with a golden opportunity early on and an offense that has been very efficient. They did have a slow start last week. The game was seven to six at halftime, but then they rang off as Mitchell under some pressure, but he's gonna flash that big arm early going deep. There's contact down the field. There's the flag, intended receiver, number 13, Jared Staub. And why not Staub? Three receptions on the season, two of them for touchdowns. See the replay? A lot of contact with the white jerseys. And back in business with even better field position now after the penalty. And they hand it off. Who will it be tonight? In the backfield. They go back to number six, Leron Huff, who was out last week. But boy, did he deliver in week one of this season, that 55-7 game against Simi Valley. Take a look at Mitchell from the shotgun. Got to respect his arm. And then he got to deal with Huff in the backfield. Huff, 16 carries, 179 yards, and three touchdowns in week one. They go back to Huff. Huff with a nice move to his left. Breaks inside between the blockers and hits the end zone again. The first six of the game on homecoming night delivered by number six. How fitting. LaRon Huff returns to the lineup and puts his team on the board early after the turnover. There he is, finding pay dirt. And a little jump celebration. On for the extra point for West Ranch. Sebastian Demas with a beautiful shot by our cameraman through the goalpost. Looks like he's kicking it into the into a painting. Seven nothing. Early lead for the Wildcats. But that just speaks to the versatility of this team. We mentioned Huff's big game in week one. Ryan Camacho last week with 188 yards on the ground. He also plays receiver. He leads the team with two interceptions. His brother Jovan, you'll see him work in the slot a lot at the receiver position. What a luxury for Mitchell. Can dump off those short passes and Jovan can go to work. And we'll see once again if Glasgow can continue what he started last week. But now the Lancers will get another shot. Their return team is back. Getting a little darker. And he'll let it go. Number two, Troy Halo. Or Halo. You're watching LivePlaySports.tv. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan with your play-by-play. -play. Been covering this West Ranch team all season long, even though we are still early in the season. 2-0, good to be atop the Foothill League with their rivals, Valencia High, playing on their home field tonight. Lancers, brief meeting. Maybe already a little shaken up with the composure. The turnover that turned into points. Don't want to get down to this Wildcat team because they have proven this season they can put points on the board and points on the board in a hurry. We did mention the sluggish start last week, seven to six, but when all was said and done, they ran off 27 unanswered points, 39-12 victory. But of a smash mouth run up the middle, they go back 
to Angel Baker. So nice call by Michael Laban, the coach for Thousand Oaks, showing confidence in his top back. He had the fumble, and he starts this drive saying, don't worry, kid, I still believe in you. And some positive yardage through the heart of the Wildcat defense. Short gain of about three for Baker. And Baker again, and Baker finding a little more room this time. Jake wheels in on the tackle. He had that fumble recovery. Ball spotted at the 48-yard line. It is a first down. Back to Baker. Once again, Baker tries to spin out of the ankle tackle, but Jake Wheels, who has been, or rather that's number 36 this time, a new defender, Zachary Van Benicum, a man whose number we've called plenty already this season. Van Benicum, second on the team with 16 tackles. Chase Artopius from the shotgun. Three wideouts to his left, one to his right, and he goes to his right. Hits his man on the sideline, number 31, complete with his first catch of the game, Ryan Vasquez. And a little bit quicker back in the huddle, maybe trying to keep this West Ranch defense. Catch them off guard, keep them on their toes. Back to the shotgun. So it looked like if he's going B gap, they're just taking a B gap to open it. Third down and short. Back to Baker. Baker off left tackle. Baker finding some room. Baker will have first down yardage and more. Baker still fights until the whistle is finally blown, but he barrels all the way inside the 35 yard line to about the 33. See your replay. Camacho on the stop. Enough for a Lancer. First down. Jovan Camacho wraps him up. Back to Baker. Baker again. This has been a very simple game plan on this drive other than that sideline throw. We've seen Baker, 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 and Baker. Early on, seven of them. Artopius started on the freshman team at Rigetti High his first season. The varsity went 0-3, and they said, I think we want to make a quarterback change and call up this young man. And he finished the year as the varsity starter. But no subtlety here. Back to Baker. This time, Valencia was ready for it. Or rather, West Ranch of Valencia. 52, Giovanni Nicolazzo with a tackle. Very little room to operate for Baker on that left side on that carry here at Dr. Paul A. Pree's Stadium. Right outside the 25. Baker really showing off that power running now and looks like he's carrying that ball much closer to his chest. He's aware of the early fumble and atoning for it on this drive, grinding out yardage, trying to wear down this Wildcat defense. And they are marching down the field, now officially in the red zone at the 20-yard line. He's been it. He's been it. He's been it. You know what? Yeah. Artopius. Baker. Baker with some room inside. Baker with a nice move. Baker gets behind his blockers until he's finally brought down inside the five-yard line. Wire off the stop. But here it is again, Angel Baker going to work. Nice tackle to save the touchdown. By 39 of West Ranch, Brandon Wire. But knocking on the door are the Lancers trying to tie this game up. They're at the three yard line. 
in motion, number 28. He comes back behind right tackle. They go to Baker, and why not? But this time, Baker meets one, two, three Wildcat defenders. 18, Jake Killingsworth, the team's leading tackler, adding to his total. He came into the game with 23 tackles. And that time he wraps up number 23 for the big stop inside the five-yard line. Of course, the ulterior motive is keeping that Wildcat offense off the field, running down this clock, staying on the ground, number seven in motion to the left. Artopius keeps it and pretty much walks into the end zone, and he's got a little jump celebration of his own. So the Lancers match the touchdown of the Wildcats on the quarterback keeper by the junior. The extra point will tie it up if they can execute. Lopez, number four, is their man. And his right leg delivers. It's a 7-7 tie. 5.42 to go in the first quarter on homecoming night. On paper, we thought this would be a good matchup coming in. And early on, these teams matching touchdown for touchdown and Angel Baker. He was really the story on that drive, carrying the ball every play except for two plays. They went with a sideline pass in the middle of the drive and then ending the drive with Chase Artopius. As you see the replay, of course, West Ranch King on Baker and Artopius saying, what's behind door number two? Oh, a touchdown. Three, five, and seven, all the odd numbers with their touchdown dance. Another beautiful shot by our crew here at LivePlaySports.tv. Lopez set the kick off. Ryan Camacho will not have a chance to return it, and that's probably good news for the Lancers. He already has a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown this season. So Colton Mitchell back to work. Mitchell 23 of 41 this season, 425 yards coming in, seven TD passes, two interceptions, has run for a couple of touchdowns. That's a 111.3 QBR. Here we go, back to the ground. It's LaRon Huff who had the touchdown on the first drive and Huff is brought down by a couple of Lancer defenders, including number 88, Blake Augustine. And they stay with Huff. And they go back to Huff. And Huff. And this drive looking eerily similar to the drive we just saw by the Lancers, which was the Angel Baker drive. This, the LaRon Huff drive on the first three plays. Timeout on the field. A lot of the students I work with, they think, oh, I don't have a talent in math, I'm never gonna get it. All these smart kids, they don't have to study and they get the A's. And even though some kids might get it quicker than others, that doesn't mean that that hidden talent and expertise isn't within you too. Guys, you just have to work a little harder for it is all, just like I did. But I wasn't always good at math, you know? In fact, I stunk at it for a while. I got the C's, the D's, the F's, the N's. I had to retake classes, but I never stopped. And here's a statement that I want to share with you guys. It's one that I've always lived by. And that's greater than talent is practice. Greater than practice is heart. Practice with heart. And you'll find that a little talent goes a long way. Think about it. 
Back to live action. West Ranch at their own 44-yard line. Second down and two. Mitchell looking to the sidelines. And now looking to his wrist, trying to get the play call right. Get everyone on the same page. And it's Huff again, or rather, no, it's Ryan Camacho, number two, who we mentioned emerged as a ball carrier. His versatility has been present ever since he put on a varsity jersey here. But last week, boy, did he deliver on the ground. And they go with a quick snap, trying to get first down yardage. Colton Mitchell on the keeper does get the first down. Ryan Camacho averaging 18.6 yards a carry on the season. Mitchell with a fake. Mitchell looking deep, and he unleashes one. The adjustment made in the air, but cannot come down with it. There were some hands. That's number 13, the intended receiver, Jared Staub. We mentioned three grabs on the year, 86 yards, two of those for touchdowns. Not afraid to let it fly is Colton Mitchell. If there's been a pattern with him this season on these long passes, we've seen him sometimes overshoot his man, but then make the adjustment on the second attempt with a similar play and then hit him right on the money. 48 yard line, Mitchell out of the shotgun again. Pressure goes short, looking for his man. Number five might have heard footsteps. That was the intended receiver, Quan Glasgow. Glasgow caught a pass like that last week where he stumbled and he quickly propelled himself up with one hand and found himself a path to the end zone. 7-7. Seven, seven. Forty-eight yard line, third down and ten. Huff looking for some room on the right side, then cuts back inside, and he's kind of pushed forward with his leg power and by the defenders of the Lancers, getting about halfway to first down yardage. Under four minutes to play now in the first quarter, getting darker on the field, getting a true Friday night lights feel which Colton Mitchell is familiar with, coming from the state of Texas now at the Lancer 48, but they will punt it away. The punt will drop into the fair catch arms of number two, Troy Hilo, as Thousand Oaks goes back to work. Has to feel good about preventing the Wildcats from scoring. And we'll see if they go back to their effective game plan of Angel Baker up the middle, Angel Baker off left tackle, Angel Baker off right tackle. Chase Artopius, spread formation, single back, and it's Baker. West Ranch well aware now of Baker's presence. A short, short gain. Looks like a gain of two by Baker. The down to go, yardage to go on the scoreboard is blanked out, so I can't give you as accurate yard measurements as I'd like to, so I apologize for that. Artopius. He's looking deep, and that's a nice spiral, but it's overthrown. Tight coverage by Jovan Camacho, intended for number five, Freddie Ricketts, the senior last year's starting quarterback. Ricketts, now a wideout. He led the team in passing and rushing last season. Tough year for Thousand Oaks, two and eight, zero oh and three in league play. But now they've got a lot of those same players back with some experience, a new quarterback, and their first win last week, trying to build on something playing at the Division IV level in the Camino League. Artopius rolls to his left, throws across body intended again for Ricketts, but to no avail. Fourth 
down at eight for the last six. So a quick three and what looks like out as the punting unit comes on. The Lancer punter, number seven it looks like. Dakota Conway with a kick. Decent height, another fair catch by Jovan Camacho at about the 43 yard line. We'll see where they officially mark it. And West Ranch, as you see the flag flag, it's a sideline warning from our referee crew. Shotgun to Mitchell, Mitchell to Huff, Huff. And they get him low on the tackle. Back to work, Mitchell, shotgun again, quick pass to the sideline, complete. The number 13, that's Jared Staub. Staub, looking at the playbook as well. They go back to Huff, Huff. Splitting the defense with a little stop and go, and he may go all the way he does. LaRon Huff with touchdown number two of the night. Touchdown number five of the season in only two games. LaRon is gone to the end zone again. West Ranch back on top. On for the extra point is Sebastian Demas. And he makes it 14 to seven. There's Laron Huff, nice move there. Right before that he made a little bit of a pause, let the defenders drift by him. And he's back in the end zone. There you see the Santa Clarita Valley. Kickoff taken at the 10. A nice aloof. Aloof's not a word. Illusion. Elusiveness. That's the word I was looking for. We're back. We're all back. Here we go. The Lancers, number two, the return man. Troy Hilo. I'll spot it at the 19. And now they will try to match the touchdown once again. Started with a Laron Huff TD run for West Ranch. Then a Chase Artopius keeper for Thousand Oaks. And now another Laron Huff TD from the 19. Rolling to his left, Artopius throws on the run and he throws deep, but it'll fall short. He gets a hand on it. There's some contact. No flags by the referee. A late, late flag as 26 showing the emotion. Jake Wheels on the coverage. Look at this replay. Artopius. It's a difficult throw to make. So he puts some air under it. And there you see some contact. And 
just go home then? Yeah, because clearly you didn't see it right now. And they will spot it at the 34-yard line. So essentially, 15-yard penalty. Artopius and behind the line of scrimmage stuffed is Angel Baker as the whole West Ranch defense Seems like they got the same Evi to the same party. See this replay right away, just grabbing the jersey, holding him down for his teammates, Grayson Thomas, saying, hey guys, I got him. If you'd like an assist, Thomas, the leading sack man this season for West Ranch with four and a half. But Artobius goes back to the air, hits his man in stride, number two with a nice grab. Hilo. Troy Hilo. So good recovery. From the loss of yardage on the previous play. They pick up a first down. Here's Artobius. Already raising his completion percentage from last season, 10%. He was 41 last year, 51 coming in. They go to Angel Baker. Angel Baker looking for that left tackle blocker again, and he grinds out some yardage, not moving too quickly, but moving forward nonetheless. Sometimes that's what it's all about, his helmets come off. Follow your blockers. Keep marching through that pile. And by the end of the play, you got four or five yards. Second and six, the official call here. From the 44, Artopius. Hilo. With a big hit by Jovan Camacho, he cannot hang on. Artopius pass incomplete. Jennifer Hilo broken up by Camacho. Very formidable secondary for the Wildcats. The Camacho Twins leading the way. And that's just a bang bang play right there. Referee. Incomplete indeed. Moving up in the pocket and had his man on the run who looks like he has some momentum going but can't hang out of the ball again. So, Angel Baker. Much like the previous play, it was a tough play, but they say if it hits your hands, you should catch it. And the punting unit on once again. This is a short high kick, which rolls out of bounds. And West Ranch will start it at the 20. Ron Huff back on the ground for the Wildcats. And that will end the first quarter. West Ranch on top, 14 to 7. Good game thus far. Both these offenses primarily doing damage on the ground, but quarterbacks making some key completions as well.
And we'll take a brief pause here on LivePlaySports.tv. Come back with you for the second quarter. Second quarter. Second quarter underway. As they try to get Quan Glasgow involved in the offense. He had two touchdowns last week, four receptions for 62 yards. Glasgow, a transfer from Valencia High, set the freshman record with 17 touchdowns on the freshman team. Man in motion, they fake the handoff to Jovan Camacho. Colton Mitchell will take it himself, and Colton Mitchell will run all the way almost back to Texas to visit some family and say, I scored a touchdown in California. And Colton Mitchell makes this a 20 to seven game. There he is, known for his arm thus far. He's had two short touchdown runs coming in, but this one, is of respectable distance indeed. Extra point. Demas. No good, it looks like. Wide right, so it'll stay 20 to seven. It's about a 34 yard run by Mitchell. Seconds and isn't that a luxury? You come in, you scout Mitchell, you scout all the weapons. He's known for the big arm, and you got to respect that. So that's going to open up some room in the middle of the field. And hey, you got to deal with Jovan Camacho in motion. He's so versatile. Colton Mitchell, a lot of room to work with. And by the time the white jerseys were in pursuit, he was already off the freeway exit and home safely into the end zone. There's the kickoff into the night sky. The Lancers. Short return, ball is loose. The Navy jerseys say we have the ball and so do the referees. And West Ranch now picking up some momentum, a 27 lead, another turnover delivered to them as number 54 comes up with it. That's Ethan Eichten, the junior linebacker. In a game with four touchdown runs, three by West Ranch, one by Thousand Oaks, and now West Ranch 
as they have shown this season, can pile up the points in bunches, threatening once again, but a nice job behind the line of scrimmage to make the stop for the Lancers, number 88. So that's Quan Glasgow lined up at running back. Glasgow the ball carrier. Blake Augustine with a stop and just continuing to show new wrinkles. How do you prepare if the running backs are Huff, sometimes Ryan Camacho, as we saw last week, now working in Quan Glasgow? They made a nice stop there, but just putting more and more on the mind of this Lancer defense and the coaching staff. Mitchell steps up in the pocket. Mitchell throws across the middle of the field. Flag flies intended for Jovan Camacho, number 12. Looks like he picked up some contact. Mitchell pass is complete. for Camacho. See the replay running across the field. Can't really see the left arm, but that's number 12. Dylan Kane, a junior. Trying to get Jovan going as well. Comes in tonight with 191 yards receiving and two touchdown receptions. <laughs> they will mark that one. As you see, some of the scoreboard is blacked out. Now the flag looks like a false start against the home team. West Ranch with the gold numbers and the white trim. Colton Mitchell out of the shotgun. Rolls a little to his right, but a lot of white jerseys this time. And the Lancers trying to stay in this ball game, wrap him up. Shared sack on that play. 54, Jake Ennis on the attack and coming from the blind side. Number 22, Andrew Lichtenstein. Finishing the job. Now the ball at the 23. Mitchell, short pass. Working underneath. Glasgow is stopped by number 28. Santiago Huera. Freddie Ricketts clogging things up over there as well. And the field goal unit is on to attempt what looks like a 39-yard field goal. Nice confidence showing his kicker. A weird snap. But that does affect the kick. So tough sequence for Demas after missing the extra point. Now missing the field goal attempt. But the snap. Kicking is so much about timing, and that was a tough one to recover from as the holder was able to hang on to the ball, but Demas already in motion towards the ball by the time the holder set it up. Couldn't get the leg under it. Score remains 20 to seven, and the Lancers will breathe a sigh of relief as the turnover does not result in points, and they get another chance with their offense. And quarterback Chase Artopius running back Angel Baker and looking to get some of these receivers involved as well. Baker. Penalty as we await the referee's call. A legal procedure. First 
And off. Angel Baker looking for room. Baker the ball to her. First round by Camacho. Camacho on the stop. They make it second and 13. They'd love to nick away at this 13 point lead right here and make this game much tighter. Short pass underneath to Angel Baker. Eighteen and nine, teaming for the stop. Jake Killingsworth and Joseph Tempesta, the junior. Twenty-five yard line. Out of the shotgun, Hartopius surveying the field. And right as he does, he's brought down for the sack. Well, number nine for West Ranch, Joseph Tempesta. So back to back plays Tempesta. Six yard loss on the play, fourth and 11. Punting unit on once again. Kick bounces to all the 35. And that's where the drive will start for West Ranch. 20 to seven on top. Two touchdown runs from the returning LaRon Huff. And a 47-yard burst by Colton Mitchell. <laughs> Rather, that was a 34-yard touchdown by Mitchell. And they go back to Huff on the ground. I think Huff had the 47-yarder earlier. But I second and five. Probably wrong. <laughs> second and five, Leron Huff, ball carrier. Boy, bottom of your screen, you gotta deal with Jovan in the slot. And there he is on the screen pass. Runs into his own man. Uh, I mentioned also Glasgow was next to him, so Defensive coordinator is facing a bit of a pick your poison against West Ranch. As number seven recovers, to get back on the play. Looks like a face mask was called on West Ranch, however. That'll drive him back. Face mask. <laughs> Seen our fair share of flags this evening. Mitchell with a one-handed retrieval of a snap and he unleashes a pass down the field and nearly hits his man Glasgow. But tight coverage in the secondary by number 12 of Thousand Oaks, Dylan Kane. Boy, what a recovery there by Mitchell, showing great composure. That snap was a little bit wide of his body. He pulled it in with one hand and almost immediately unleashed a beautiful pass down the field. So they were going for a big play right there. Mitchell only threw 40 passes last year in Texas, very limited action. So they weren't sure what they had until he got on the field this season, and thus far he has delivered and delivered big time. Here we go again, out of the shotgun. This time a short pass and working the middle of the field. There's Glasgow, Glasgow with a move, but 
He stumbles forward for about an extra four or five yards as he's tripped up. And they mark it at the 42. Timeout on the field. Booking a math tutoring session has never been easier until now. Visit our website today and book your first hour free. Start by choosing your location and the type of session that you'd like. Select your tutor, followed by the date and time that suits your schedule best. Then just fill out our simple booking form with your contact information and click Request Booking. You'll then receive a tentative confirmation email from us, followed by a final confirmation. And that's it. See you there. Okay, back to live action. West Ranch offense. Now the punting unit. Kick. Rolls out of bounds into the end zone. So they thought they had a nice ball that get pinned down there inside the 10. But instead, they'll start the drive at the 20. You're watching LivePlaySports.tv's coverage of Friday Night High School Football. A lot of sponsors make this possible. One of them, the Brain Balance Achievement Centers. I'm joined now in the booth by Dr. James Girdlestone, the center director. James, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me, Darren. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan. Nice to meet you. Okay, Patrick, good to meet you. <laughs> I think you was talking to Darren, our producer. Yeah, it was. That's okay. It was, that's okay. And the handoff. As the Lancers start the drive, as they started many a drive with Angel Baker. So tell us a bit about Brain Balance Achievement Centers and what you do over there. Sure. Well, the easiest way to think about Brain Balance is to think about taking your brain to the gym. That's basically how I explain it to my kids and young people. Uh, what we're about is stimulating in a variety of ways, physically and through other sensory inputs, brain growth and development. And so wherever there's an opportunity to dial up and strengthen any kind of deficiencies, that's what we target and what we work on. And you're located here in the Valencia area? We are. We're right next to Barnes & Noble, so it's really easy to find. Get a lot of people coming in just uh, asking questions and checking things out just by way of passing through. Anything you see uh, in your own work that uh, kind of transfers to the field tonight that we're seeing on the field? Uh, just about everything, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things we do uh, to begin our whole process is an assessment of 1,500 different points of neurological development and growth, all of which are employed in sitting here and watching a game like this from uh, sensory input through the eyes, obviously visual is huge. Your ability to take in all the visual inputs and information and stimulation effectively and uh, efficiently is uh, a gigantic portion. But you also have, if you think about it, auditory. Lots of uh, auditory input through the hearing, processing and making sense of what you hear is different than the actual mechanics of simply hearing. And so we're dealing with a lot of that. Olfactory smell is a big part. Um, and sensory motor in general, just how we sense the space, how we perceive space between players, what, what we make sense of in terms of spatial movement and action. All of that is not just visual, it is um, collected and processed deep in the brain and made sense of and interpreted and responded to appropriately or not so appropriately if there's areas of deficiency or processing uh, delays or integration issues. Sure, absolutely, I can see that, uh, especially now with how sports analytics have come so far where they measure just about every decision a player makes in a split second and yeah, how true. they make that decision, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, anything really. Yeah, it's true. And what's challenging these days with kids and young people is how quickly things move. You know, whether it's on television or on your phone or like here, live and in person or on a screen, everything moves so quickly. Technology has increased that rapid need for input 
And that in and of itself causes uh, challenges in processing. You know, again, it's all about when it comes to interacting with our environment, including the, the succeeding in academics and so on, is taking in information, making sense of that information, and then responding to it. If any of that process breaks down, that's where kids struggle. As a punt again for the Lancers. And taken back by Quan Glasgow looking for room. And he finds some room on the outside. A flag flies. So Glasgow probably ran around for about 17 yards of space, but gained only a few. And we'll see what the flag says the final result is and if it'll push West Ranch back. See this replay? Glasgow says, not that street. Let me check my GPS. Uh, no, maybe this, maybe over here. Uh, no, this is a traffic jam. I'm just going to park my car right here. They call you Dr. G right here. They do. My last name is long and difficult to pronounce, so <laughs> everybody appreciates it, but especially the kids and the young people. Yeah, what well, you were saying just now, I'm constantly amazed by young people how as the pitch in the backfield of Jovan Camacho and another flag as those flags continue to mount in this ballgame. Just how quickly and how the world keeps moving quicker because of technology and how you have to process that and really amazed by the ability of young people to do so and also they have to continually adapt to that as it moves quicker. Yeah, it, it really is astounding how you know, amazing kids are, and, and the human brain itself is a, is a miracle in this environment. You know, the last 10 years I've been a university professor teaching philosophy and ethics, and one of my specialties is how different these times in which we live are as opposed to a generation ago. What I like to tell my students uh, these days is that we bees different than we used to bees before, forgive the grammar. And what that indicates is it's not just thinking, it's not just, you know, intellectual process. It's our entire consciousness, which is involved in our interaction with each other and with our environment. When anything breaks down in the process of being, you know, alive and being responsive to your environment, anything slows down, anything gets blocked, then we, we run into frustrations, we run into issues. Usually those work themselves out behaviorally or academically or both. And so that's where you get, you know, reports from parents about, oh my gosh, I've got a really smart uh, son, but he can't control his emotions, or vice versa, you know. Uh, they're challenged academically, but they're very perceptive and good with people. Uh, you know, that relationship between left and right hemisphere, which is the ultimate expression of a fully mature person, is what suffers in an environment with so many inputs, things moving so quickly, so much uh, intensity unlike anything that we've ever seen really on planet Earth before. So it's an amazing time. And um, those who are challenged by adapting to that time are, are really those that we try to help and focus on. Wow, it sounds like you're doing great work over there. I mean, just my own workman's uh, assessment, it sounds like all this new information just comes new challenges, right? Yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really the case, you know, and it's, it's an interesting thing. The common denominator with all of the... Jared Staub getting loose on the short pass, and he will take it all the way for his third touchdown of the season. Colton Mitchell to Jared Staub, who came into the game. His stat line, three receptions, 89 yards and two touchdowns. He did have a short reception tonight, but now make it five catches on the year, three of them for touchdowns. Reminiscent of, this is going way back, but there was a time where they said about now Hall of Fame wide receiver, former Minnesota Viking Chris Carter, they said all he does is catch touchdowns. <laughs> Extra point, Demas redeems 27 to seven, West Ranch on top. Here's your replay on live play sports, Colton Mitchell feeling the heat from 22 on the pass rush and Staub, the over pursuit by the cornerback and boy, that was a risk that did not pay off as Jared Staub buys some real estate in the corner of the end zone. <laughs> so right there. Yeah, 
just that plate right there is a great illustration of all the things that really have to work well, efficiently, and effectively in order for a play to be made like that. Spatial awareness, coordination, not just athleticism, but a well-balanced brain that can take in all kinds of different sensory data, process it you know, with amazing speed, and pick up a ball and run it in the end zone. That's, that's a miracle in the making right there, and, and that's uh, a great example of what we shoot for. Line drive kickoff number 87, and he tries to avoid a tackler, and in a result, Eric Gramer, number 87, coughs up the football. Third fumble turnover of the game for Thousand Oaks. And now, with a score reading 27 to seven, as coming up with it for West Ranch, looks like number 37, Bryce Buchanan, That's another, as uh, Colton Mitchell goes back to work, rolling left, throws a short pass. Number eight, Weston Egget. First time he's called his number tonight as we see the depth of this receiving core continue. Glasgow, Jovan Camacho, Jared Stahl, Weston Egget. It's like Colton Mitchell goes to the spice rack and he's got every spice in the cupboard. <laughs> Looks like a misdirection play. Jovan Camacho will hang on to the ball and go into the end zone for the touchdown. And a receiver I mentioned a moment ago, I believe that time they lined him up at running back. We'll see what our cameras picked up on the replay as Jovan Camacho, the twin brother of Ryan Camacho. They've been doing a little mano a mano all year. Very healthy competition, I think, between the brothers. Make it 33 to seven. Demas looking to tack on one more. 142 to go in the first half. And it is now 34 to seven for the West Ranch Wildcats. Thanks to Jovan Camacho. Fourth different player tonight to score a TD for the Navy and Gold. And how fitting he is number four. Another angle. And actually similar to the fumble we saw in the kickoff as the aggression of Gramer trying to Yank away from the defender. That time, Jovan kept that ball held close to himself, even though the defender went for a swipe for the fumble. He hung on to it, and that's just great fundamental football. Have you gotten a chance to see this team play yet this season? This is the first time I've had uh, an opportunity. It's pretty impressive stuff. Beautiful setting, too. Yeah, really... A lot of things coming together for them. The Camacho twins coming back from last season with their experience. And you add the quarterback, the transfer from Texas, Colton Mitchell. Kwan Glasgow, formerly, formerly of Valencia High. Now on West Ranch. Laron Huff getting his shot at running back this season. And it looks like that's Jovan Camacho kicking. I haven't seen that this year. He kicks a line drive. We know he plays on the baseball team. I don't think he's on the soccer team. Versatile guy. Sure is. Defensive back, wide receiver. They line up with a running back as well. I think they had a pretty good baseball team this year as well, as I recall. So Thousand Oaks now with a 27-point deficit, 142 to go in the first half uh, would be a confidence boost to try to get them back on track if they could put some points up and at least cause a kink in the armor. Maybe regroup at halftime. And Artopius with a nice pass underneath, across the middle, down the field, number 31 with a completion. Ryan Vasquez. And they have to move quickly with a clock ticking away down to the 41-yard line. 
don't want to give this Wildcat defense chance to get set as well. We talk so much about this offense. Defense this year gave up seven in the first game, 12 in their last game. Artopius on the run to the sideline. Completes to Vasquez again. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And such a change from last year. This defense, the, they only gave up 14 points one time the rest of the games. They gave up more and sometimes much more than that. The offense only scored 28 was their season high. They started this year with 55. So a whole different team for West Ranch. Hence the 2-0 record. Here's Artopius. Looks to his left. Looks to his right. Angel Baker. Short game. Wrapped up. Gets out of bounds. On the coverage, Jake Killingsworth. You see just under 53 seconds to go here at Dr. Paul A. Pre Stadium. Thousand Oaks going to work. Artopius. And that's a reception, but boy, was he pushed back. 22 James. Mason James on the stop. Gets Troy Hilo. Timeout, 43.1 seconds to go. Well, thank you for all that information about Brain Balance, and you thanks bet. for sponsoring us as well. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great to be included. Dr. G, we'll see you again, and enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Time out on the field. We're about to approach Halftime of homecoming night. Five seconds to go. Just inside the 10, Artopius in the end zone, overthrows his intended receiver. Looking for Hilo again. Now with 41 seconds to work with. Second down. Artopius looking for something on the right side of the field, and he is chased down from behind. The big stop by Van Benicum. The sophomore linebacker in hot pursuit. Artopius may be trusting a bit too much. He's had that kind of blocking. He has had some decent protection this game, but Van Benicum picking up the speed. And he's pumped up. Thwarting the efforts of the Lancers now facing a third down situation. Time is the enemy. 33.7 on the clock here at Valencia. I keep saying that. It's West Ranch sharing this field with their rivals. They've got a showdown set for October 27th. It'd be great if they were one and two in the league then. It would really add to the intensity of that matchup. But so much football to play till then. Who knows how it will shape up. Okay, here we go. Artopius fires away and through the hands a very catchable ball. Ryan Vasquez. Artopia has made a nice throw. And Vasquez, he had some coverage, but he did have enough distance to haul it in. 
But execution is the name of the game. And West Ranch has done that much more on offense thus far than the Lancers have as you see the replay. Ryan Camacho on the coverage. They'll try a field goal. And they will take the points to put them at double digits and at least get this score to 34 to 10. As we near halftime. So I believe Lopez, the kicker, once again. And there he is. Junior, 5'9", 170. And we'll see what West Ranch has in store with such little time left in the first half. They kick it short, out of bounds. And they will start what is likely the final drive of the half. At the 25 yard line, will they take a knee or will they keep this engine running? Bottom of your screen is stopped. We saw him get loose on that long touchdown as Mitchell takes the knee. And that will be it for the first half as the seconds tick away. A familiar sight thus far this season. West Ranch on top with a healthy lead, 34 to 10 over visiting Thousand Oaks. You're watching LivePlaySports.tv. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan with your play-by-play. -play. We'll see you for the second half shortly. Thank you for watching. a day he would have a fit. Prior to brain balance, my son was very much unable to focus. Diagnosed with ADHD or a processing problem? Discover Brain Balance. Brain Balance delivers on the promise of a better life for your child and your family. As we went through our first month, huge things started to happen. There was major growth in her fine motor skills. It's been an amazing transformation. Find real help for your struggling child. Call 800-877-5500 or visit brainbalance.com.
they are uh, Apollo's Prima Vista, and what's the third one? Hello, folks, and welcome to Live Play Sports.tv's coverage of high school football from Valencia High School. Tonight, we have a matchup the visiting Thousand Oaks Lancers taking on the home team West Ranch High, also of Valencia, sharing this field with their rivals. Sponsors tonight, Prima Vista Tutoring, and also Apollo's Barber Shop. Also, Brain Balance, the Achievement Center of Valencia. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan with your play-by-play. -play. You see the band lining the field.
Brody, before brain balance, struggled in a lot of ways. Brianna was diagnosed with visual and auditory processing disorder and dyslexia. You know when your child is struggling. Discover Brain Balance. Our program delivers on the promise of a better life for your child and your entire family. She's always reading now. Ella is a completely different child after brain balance. This really is the answer. Find real help for your struggling child. Call 800-877-5500 or visit brainbalance.com. I want to share something with you guys today. That's you're a lot smarter than you think you are. A lot of the students I work with, they think, oh, I don't have a talent in math, I'm never going to get it. All these smart kids, they don't have to study and they get the A's. And even though some kids might get it quicker than others, that doesn't mean that that hidden talent and expertise isn't within you too. Guys, you just have to work a little harder for it as all, well, just like I did. But I did, wasn't always good at math, you know? In fact, I stunk at it for a while. I got the C's, the D's, the F's, the N's. I had to retake classes, but I never stopped. And here's a statement that I want to share with you guys. It's one that I've always lived by. And that's greater than talent is practice. Greater than practice is heart. Practice with heart. And you'll find that a little talent goes a long way. Think about that.
Welcome back to LivePlaySports.tv. Are you looking at the dancing quarterback, Colton Mitchell? And he has plenty of reason to show off those moves as he did in the first half, adding to his fine, fine season. There you see six of nine, 116 yards in the air, threw a long touchdown pass to Jared Staub. Also scampered for a 34-yard touchdown run. That is the third consecutive game he's run for a touchdown of this season. With all the talk of his arm, Mitchell showing his versatility as well. Now with eight TD passes on the year, 34 first half points for West Ranch. Very different from last week when they only scored seven in the first half. Of course, they recovered to finish with 39. And that's been the story this season. 55 in week one. And this offense showing the explosion. We keep talking about so many weapons. Seen that on display tonight. The return of Laron Huff in the backfield. Jared Staub, big play receiver. Of course, they all benefit from each other because you can't just key on one man. Seeing the Camacho twins in on some plays. This defense holding Thousand Oaks only 10 points. It's homecoming night. They had the ceremony at halftime. Now we are trying to get back into football mode. See if West Ranch can finish this game off and go to 3-0. Thousand Oaks trying to reach 500, came in at 1-2. We mentioned Laron Huff. Casey Staub. Left of your screen. First half, he had three grabs for 87 yards and a touchdown, a 66 yard touchdown, which he did most of the running yards after catch. Lancers on the other side. Very modest numbers for Chase Artopia, six of 13 in the air for 68 yards. Angel Baker, 17 carries, 85 yards, did have a fumble. Most of those yards came on one drive where they marched down the field. In the beginning of this game, they were matching touchdown for touchdown before the game got out of hand. Three first half fumble turnovers have really hurt the visiting squad. Artopius did have a touchdown run, and they finished the half with a field goal. Jovan Camacho with a 12-yard TD run himself for West Ranch. And LaRon Huff. Week one. Opened the game with a couple of big touchdown runs. Finished that game with 179 yards and three TDs. And tonight in the first half only, 13 carries, 136 yards and two touchdowns. Huff is back and back in a big way. Chris Varner's squad announcing to the Foothill League that they are here to be reckoned with. This is a non-league game though. Thousand Oaks plays in the Camino League. Valencia upending Newberry Park. 48 to nothing tonight. We're at their campus though, Valencia High, West Ranch sharing the field with their rivals. There you see some strategizing, not resting on their laurels with his 24 point lead. Barner, former coach over at Canyon High, 2007 and 2010. As we slowly get underway, there is a little bit of that feel of the come down from the homecoming celebration. 
making sure everybody's on the same page to finish this football game. We've got two quarters left to play here on LivePlaySports.tv. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan with your play-by-play -play from Dr. Paul A. Pree Stadium. And what an exciting offense to watch this season for West Ranch and their supporters. And also, not to be dismissed, this defensive squad, they gave up seven in week one, 12 last week, and thus far, only 10 tonight. Great secondary. A lot of different linebackers and defensive linemen making plays as well. As Lopez, the kicker for the Lancers, takes his customary pace backwards. Got his ritual going on. There's the fans. Student body. And plenty of glow sticks. Here's the kickoff. It will hit the end zone, and Ryan Camacho would rather return it as he bows his head to say, ah, give me one. Okay, here we go. Colton Mitchell, LaRon Huff. And the Wildcats. Keep trying to pile on the points as a soccer ball has strayed onto the field from someone practicing nearby. Here we go, underway. Quick throw to the sideline. Juan Glasgow, Glasgow heads up field. Following his blocker. Always one of the underrated aspects of the wide receiver positions, those great blocking wide receivers like Heinz Ward, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Saw a nice block there. Here's Mitchell again. They go back to Huff. Huff. Ball comes loose. And there is one Wildcat jersey in there, but the referee says the Lancers come up with it. So can they build off this? Number seven, Dakota Conway, the junior. And they get their first turnover. Trying to atone for the three they've given up. Huff trying to spin around there, fall forward for an extra yard or two, and it cost them the possession. So, usually the way to do this is slowly but surely. Can they chip away and cut into this lead and keep the Wildcat offense off the field? Chase Artopius will get his shot. Angel Baker in the backfield. 85 tough yards in the first half. Rolling to his left. Artopius looking down the field. Hits in stride almost, number nine. Boy, he had him. He had split the defenders a little bit to the sideline. If they uh, executed the pass in the right place, would have been a big gain. Intended receiver, number nine, Colton Ledford. You see Artopius looking that way. And he does get between the secondary, but the ball hits the ground. We're at the 46-yard line. Artopius facing the pass rush. Short pass to Baker. Baker picking up speed. Baker following his blockers in the middle of the field. A mouth guard comes loose. So working the underneath pass of the running back. A low risk pass. And if you got a guy like Baker who can turn it into some yards, as he did there, you got to keep going to that well. Artopius looking right this time. He's worked both sides of the field tonight, but that sideline pass is thrown way over the intended receiver, number 31, Ryan Vasquez. Pass <laughs> Into Wildcat territory at the 32. Baker up the middle. Baker the ball, Probably puts him about 
A little over 90 yards for the night as he continues to grind it out. Six yard gain, third and four. Gain of six, third down and four. Baker, 124 yards in their victory last week. Artopi is the fake handoff going to the air. He will air it out and a lot of hands on it, but any play that would have been made will probably have been made out of bounds. So they'll try it again. Artopius looking composed out there. We mentioned he's been a starter on a varsity squad since about the middle of his freshman season over at Rigetti High from Santa Maria, his first year at Thousand Oaks. Artopius looking down the middle of the field again, and he has his man. If he can get him in a nice grab made in the end zone, and that is indeed a touchdown for the Lancers, number five, Freddie Ricketts. So it's this year's quarterback to last year's quarterback with the connection, and they cut into this West Ranch lead, open up the second half with a fumble recovery, and now Artopius right down the heart of the defense with a beautifully executed spiral and Freddie Ricketts with a grab, beating Jovan Camacho in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Got to feel good for Ricketts because he was such a big part of this team last year as they go for the two-point conversion. Angel Baker barreling, and he fights his way into the end zone. So a lot of positive things happening for Thousand Oaks in the beginning of the third quarter. 34 to 18 now. They get the fumble recovery, they get the touchdown, they get a tough, tough two-point conversion by Angel Baker, their man on the ground. There's the Artopias pass again. Freddie Ricketts, last year's quarterback and leading rusher out of the quarterback position, playing wide receiver this year. They haven't keyed on him in the passing game, but boy, does he come up big there. The senior team player hauling it in. It's a 25 yard pass play from Artopius. And looks like, I'm guessing those are the phone lights. 34-18 now. And West Ranch leaving a little opening in the door for Thousand Oaks to get back in this game. Plenty of time left. They've got to feel good about their execution coming out of the locker room. But Colton Mitchell, as we have seen tonight and all season long, can change it in a hurry with his arm and his feet. And they go to the ground to Ryan Camacho. <coughs> Brought down by 16 and 22 for the Lancers. Call it a five yard gain for Ryan. Mitchell going to the air. And a dangerous pass thrown in the direction of Glasgow as cutting across the middle, number 12, Dylan Kane, was indeed waiting to deliver the hit. The pass incomplete. Mitchell, the pitch to Ryan Camacho. Looks like a gain of four on that play. 
Camacho, I mentioned Joe Vaughn of the baseball team. Also Ryan, a 354 hitter this year with two home runs and 14 runs batted in. That team had 20 victories, 20 and nine on the year. Punting unit is on. Looks like 56 back there to kick. And it's a good kick. And it takes a nice roll in favor of the Wildcats. Dylan Josek, a senior, getting his chance to punt it away. And some big victories and small victories. Of course, the touchdown is what you're looking for as an end result. But now... Thousand Oaks comes up with a stop of the Wildcat offense. They put their offense back on the field and a chance to once again chip away at this lead. It'll have to be a long drive as Artopius handles the snap and then bounces it off the floor like a basketball and then he unleashes a deep pass down the field. There is contact, but probably in essence not a catchable ball. Not very often you see a snap take a favorable bounce like that as Artopius dribbles it. And then looking like Chris Paul back there. Unleashes one, but his man cannot catch up to it. Sideline pass quickly deflected by Linebacker slash now punter Dylan Josak. <laughs> Josak. So does the leg. Now shown us the hands. Third down. Trying to get the play right. Another errant snap, but Artopius hauls it in, throws on the run, complete. The number five, Freddie Ricketts. Ricketts with that touchdown moments ago. Artopius pass complete to Ledford. Well, was it Ledford? Ledford's number nine, Rick is number five. And they convert. So big third down play as the flag flies, they go to Baker. But that was an early flag. Another positive thing happening, a third down conversion for Thousand Oaks. So taking the right strategy, not Looking out of sorts, looking like they still believe they can get back into this game. And that's where it starts. You're watching LivePlaySports.tv. We've got your coverage of West Ranch football all season. Spread formation, three wideouts to his right. Artopius takes the snap. He will look left, however. Here comes the pass rush. They got a hand on him. Grayson Thomas, the team's leading sack man, as a flag flies. We will await the call. So the call's intentional grounding. Here's Thomas, who gave up about 100 pounds in his matchup last week against St. Genevieve. See him come around the corner here. Using his quickness. Getting some help from Dylan Josak. So on the grounding, I believe they do score that a sack. Probably half a sack each for those guys. Rolling to his right this time. 
Design play and catching Ricketts. Ricketts had a man to beat. Gets enough of him to trip him up. So maybe finding something here. Maybe knowing the athleticism of Ricketts who endured a tough season last year but gave them what he could in the passing game and running game. Had the big touchdown. Start the half. Becoming more a part of the receiving core on this drive as well. All those snaps going to the right of Artopius, doing a great job of handling it. This time he's way on the run, makes a nice pass down the field, and he finds his man who is chased down by Jovan Camacho. But Artopius finds Ledford for a long gain. And really want to credit Artopius. You've seen him handle these snaps. One was a basketball bounce pass. Most of them have been off his right hip. He's been able to recover, run away from a lot of the pursuit of the West Ranch defense, and then make these throws on the run, which by no means are easy throws. Look at this play. Artopius. Throws it where Ledford can stop and come back to it a little. And they're in business again. Another not ideal snap, Artopius, another completion to Vasquez, another flag, so. It's an illegal procedure against the Lancers. Artopius really showing his experience. Played a lot of high school football at the varsity level, even though it's his first year. At Thousand Oaks. This guy over this guy keeps calling See how the line plays off behind the center? Yeah. Maybe. And when the receiver plays, people with the line so they can receive his base because he's not on the line. Not check, he's not checking. He's not checking. Yeah. Artopius Vasquez through his hands and a dangerous ball that Ryan Camacho was almost able to dive and intercept it on the tip. But dodging a bullet. Are the visitors? Looks like they're at about the 27 yard line of West Ranch. Artopius to his right. Another pass rush he's facing and another completion to Ledford. Try to see who was in pursuit there for West Ranch. So they've had their fair share of getting by this offensive line of Thousand Oaks. But Artopius, even though he's been brought down for a couple sacks, for the most part, his rollouts, his elusiveness, his savvy, his, and his experience have kept him from making a lot of huge mistakes. And he goes through the heart of the defense again to Augustine. And here they come. Whatever happened in the locker room at halftime, it has instilled some belief in this Thousand Oaks squad as junior quarterback Chase Artopius going to work. 5.41 to go. They go back to the ground to Angel Baker. Baker looking for some room on, room on the left side. Baker coming into the game averaging 4.3 yards a carry with a couple of touchdowns. Second 
Artopius from the five. Artopius to the corner of the end zone. The adjustment. Flag flies. They look for Ricketts again. And the flag may be on Jovan Camacho. <laughs> Had a chance if the ball was placed in the right place, but flag is in the favor. As they say, he was pushed out of bounds. Ricketts not so much a forgotten man in the Bassin game as they just haven't thrown that much this season. He came into the game with nine grabs for 86 yards, but that was his first touchdown of the season. They spread it out a bit. Augustine called his number a moment ago. He has two receiving touchdowns as well, and they have Gramer, who actually coming in, the senior leads the team with 11 receptions and has a touchdown catch. But I've not seen him involved much in the passing game tonight. There'll be a timeout on the field. 34 to 18, Thousand Oaks threatening to really make this a ball game. Before Green Belt struggled in a lot of ways. Brianna was diagnosed with visual and auditory processing disorder and dyslexia. You know when your child is struggling. Discover Brain Balance. Our program delivers on the promise of a better life for your child and your entire family. She's always reading now. Ella is a completely different child after Brain Balance. This really is the answer. Find real help for your struggling child. Call 800-877-5500 or visit brainbalance.com. Out of the timeout. Second down. From the two, second and goal. Here we go. Artopius, a little quick fake handoff. Throws and a nice grab and throw. The number seven, Dakota Conway. Conway, the junior. So Chase Artopius. Maybe the most impressive thing about him this half, handling the snaps from center. But he's also thrown big touchdown passes to Freddie Ricketts and now Dakota Conway. And they will go for two again. Artopius will keep it, but the Wildcats stop them this time. Nonetheless, 34-24, it's a two-score ball game. Thousand Oaks coming out of halftime. With an eight-point drive and now a six-point drive. There's the throw. Just dragging out toward the sideline. Beating Ryan Camacho is number seven. Dakota Conway, tough to stop that play. But Artopius, two touchdown throws, one touchdown run. Like I said, handling a variety of snaps from center. And the savvy junior transfer from Rogetti High in Santa Maria has got his team back in this ball game as they try to go for back-to-back -back wins after starting the season with two consecutive losses. Well, We'll see if Colton Mitchell and the offense wakes up now. Apollo's Barbershop, one of our sponsors here tonight, the only real barbershop in Valencia. Here's the kickoff. Taking it from near the goal line is Ryan Camacho. Camacho breaking out of the pack. Camacho spinning. Camacho down inside the 35 to about the 32 or 33-yard line. Healthy return. 
He is dangerous back there. Contour turns the ball to the left hand's 33 yard line. So after a sparkling first half by this offense, they've been stalled a bit in quarter number three and kept off the field a lot by Thousand Oaks. Here's Colton Mitchell. They go to the ground to Ryan Camacho. So he just got those legs moving on the kick return. But short gain. So to correct a previous cause, the man's down, but he'll walk off the field. 52. For West Ranch. Giovanni Nicolazzo looks to be okay. So I'm just seeing this, forgive me folks, this wide angle as I look over to my right over the monitor, it looked like Artopius came up short on the conversion to me. He indeed snuck that ball in there. So another fine play made by that young man. And it is 34 to 26. An eight point ball game. Short gain. And now the Thousand Oaks defense looks pumped up. A little bit of a scuffle on the field. So this is a one, technically, one drive ball game. Two scores, if you want to say touchdown and conversion, would tie it up. Artopius, the touchdown run, the two TD passes, and running in a two-point conversion. This could be the kind of game that is really a breakthrough for this young man. If he can bring his team back here tonight. Referees trying to keep everyone honest. A lot of flags in this game. Obviously, emotions high as the game, which had a whole different energy at halftime now, is an eight-point contest and is here for the taking. <laughs> Colton Mitchell, back to pass, going deep. Intended for Glasgow. But Freddie Ricketts, his counterpart in the number department, both number five. And you can see it now. The Thousand Oaks offense making plays in the second half and the bounce is in the step of the Thousand Oaks defense. They are picking up the energy as well. They now believe they can stop this West Ranch team. They now know they're back in this ball game and we are playing some football. As number 72 runs on late before play gets going. Hunting unit is on. Dylan Clark, 72. Joe Sack punting once again. Short kick. And brought down almost immediately on the return. It's number two, Tro he Troy Hilo. They mark it at the 29. So Artopius this time has 71 yards to go to potentially tie this game if they choose to go for two. But first matter at hand is to score a touchdown. Decent snap that time. Rolls to his left, Artopius on the run, and a beautiful pass through the secondary on the left side of the field. And Freddie Ricketts 
has become Mr. Reliable in the receiving core in the second half. And boy, Artopius painting his strokes with his brush and the art form of throwing on the run. Not easy, folks. They go to Baker on the ground, now mixing it up. And Angel Baker hanging onto the ball, probably over 100 yards now. Boy, Baker's running. Artopius making plays in the passing game. And here we go into the 43 yard line of Wildcat territory. Angel Baker, well aware of that fumble early on, now hanging onto it. Artopius on the keeper, nice fake. Tries a short pass, but overthrows Hilo, who had a man very nearby. Shotgun. Artopius with the quick throw. Through the hands of number nine, nearly intercepted, but there's a flag in the play. And they pick up the flag, there'll be no call. Baker and Artopius, this duo countering the Wildcat playmakers well. And another modest throw, but continues the march down the field. Freddie Ricketts. Another first down, 2.42 to go, 34 to 26. Leaning on their man, Chase Artopius, and he is delivering here in the third quarter. Another sideline pass. This time to Troy Hilo. And this is called taking what the defense gives you. Artopius just throwing this ball underneath these sideline patterns for short gains. But it seems like every couple plays, West Ranch looks up at the scoreboard. It's a first down. Artopius to the end zone and a great late breakup of the pass by Ryan Camacho and saying to his teammates, come on guys, we know what we can do. Let's do it. LivePlaySports.tv coming to you from Valencia High in this matchup. West Ranch, Thousand Oaks look like a blowout at halftime, but now we have got ourselves a game Artopius probably could have put a little more mustard on that one, allowing Ryan Camacho to sneak in there at the last moment. This time he's on the run because of the pursuit and dangerous pass. And one of the few mental errors he made, he's made tonight. Artopius probably should have went out of bounds on that play. You put it in the air like that, under pressure, not a good throw. And coming up with the INT, here he is. He's already in trouble. The sideline's right there for the taking, but he puts the ball in play, and it looks like Camacho comes up with it. Colton Mitchell to Leron Huff. Huff 
So it was Jovan Camacho with the interception. I believe that's his first of the season. Ryan's got two. Boy, in a game like this, they fought and scratched and clawed their way back into it, and there's still plenty of time left, but at the end, we'll see when it's all said and done, little mistakes like that, how big they are, uh, that interception. Prima Vista Tutoring Solutions helping us up, out tonight. The founders, they have both... Both have uh, civil engineering degrees, tutoring since 2011 with students from toddlers to adults in college and... Incomplete pass. Over at Prima Vista, the first hour is free. Their tagline, math tutoring made simple. Avoiding disaster there. Incomplete pass. Mitchell working from the end zone. And he's in trouble, but he will get out of there, avoiding the safety, completing it to Staub. And that is a play that saves two points more than anything, even though it is a nice completion to Jared Staub. Augustine had Mitchell in his sights in the back of the end zone, but able to scamper away, get his man Staub out there in the flat. Punting unit on once again. Dylan Josak kicks. A lot of contact on the drive. And Troy Hilo. You know the rule, folks. On a punt return, you touch it, you better catch it. That's a fumble. Fumble recovered by Egep. Tough mistakes. The last few minutes here for Thousand Oaks. Weston Egget comes up with it. For West Ranch, and now they're back on offense. All of a sudden, here comes Jovan Camacho. Camacho breaking to the outside. Camacho still on his feet. <laughs> now the versatility well on display. He had that interception. Back to the ground with him. He had a touchdown run of 12 yards in the first half. Jovan. 34-26 as the third quarter winds down we are set for a very competitive fourth quarter if it keeps up like this thousand oaks has worked their way back into this ball game it was 34 10 at halftime they've put up 16 in the third but a couple of big mistakes to close out the quarter and now west ranch marching down the field threatening to add to their lead Will it be Colton Mitchell and the explosive offense of West Ranch and their defense holding steady? Or will Chase Artopius be able to minimize the mistakes and continue to make big plays and execute a comeback victory for the Lancers? Stay tuned. Okay, reversing direction in the field now. So you see them moving left to right. Colton Mitchell on the keeper. And why not? He had a 34-yard touchdown run in the first half. Six three, 200 pounds senior has been getting some division one looks. His first real showcase, though, because, as we mentioned, only threw 40 passes last year in high school at Texas. In motion, they hand it off. Twenty-two, Mason James. Going to the depth chart again. 
trying to keep the Lancers guessing. Laron Huff staying on his feet as Thousand Oaks tacklers finally bring him down. Short gain, but took a while. Fourth and two, they go for it. Laron Huff up the middle. And he crosses the goal line. So Laron Huff with his third touchdown of the evening. He's played two games this year. He's got three touchdowns in each game. Fittingly, he wears number six because, boy, he keeps delivering six points for this team. Demas knocks it through. Here's Laron Huff. Nice blocking up the middle. Dakota Conway. Just not enough strength to bring him down soon enough. Huff drags the defender into the end zone. So after a scoreless third quarter by West Ranch, they're back up to a 15 point lead. And the new challenge becomes 10 minutes, 15 seconds on the clock for the offense of Thousand Oaks. Return by number two, Troy Hilo. He's brought down by Joseph Tempesta. to about the 22 yard line. That's where they'll start the drive. And I'm sure the coaching staff reminded them, hey, we got back into this game by making smart play after smart play. Let's forget about those two mistakes, shake it off. We're still in it, 15 points. That's a couple of TDs, a conversion. Angel Baker. Back to back 100 yard games last weekend tonight. Brings up a second and six. No time to panic, really. They can still take their time on this drive. But what ideally ended with a touchdown complete toward the sideline to Ledford. Those are the kind of plays that have really got them back in this game. But unfortunately, make one mistake like those turnovers and it really reverses the fortunes. Angel Baker, Baker with a nice stutter step, finding some room. And now he slips out of a foot tackle. Finally ends up at about the 48 yard line. Baker, a tough, tough runner for this squad. Listed at 5'11", 202 pounds. Man down. For the league update, final score, Canyon 35, Highland 0. Still in progress, Ventura 41, August 21. Park 25, Antelope Valley 20, Valencia 48, Newbury Park 7. So the first in 10 for Valencia is 
getting some scores coming in. Not sure which are finals or not, but Valencia 48 and set 48 to seven on top of Newberry Park. Hart 25, Antelope Valley 20, Ventura 41, Saugus 21, Canyon High 35, Highland zero. Back to action. Artopius leading his man Baker, but he can't hang on. It's a nice throw. Gave Baker a chance to use his speed. He's already got a full head of steam. If he makes the throw, might have had a clear path to the end zone. Still, Baker doesn't come up with that. He wasn't reaching out for that one. Yeah, he was put the ball on belly. Ball at the 47. Artopius back to the ground. Flag. Not sure what the penalty count is here tonight, but I'm going to guess somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 18. Flags have been flying on both sides. Somebody got ejected. It will be on Thousand Oaks, a holding call. And they're getting the left tackle on the call. And jumping off sides. Seventy-three Lewis Kim, it looks like. Encroachment. Six one two ninety-five Kim, he knew it. Only a sophomore he saw him pound his helmet to say, My bad. So they match penalty for penalty. Eight forty to go. Artopius looking right. He'll keep it. And Looks like it was going to go out of bounds, but instead he kind of tricked the West Ranch defense and it resulted in a positive gain of about seven or eight more yards tacked on to the end of the play. Similar play, we saw him make that interception throw, but he wisely this time kept it himself. And probably if you're a coach, you're going to say, hey, run out of bounds. But Artopius saw an opening at the end of the play, took a chance, and this time it pays off as he dodges the ankle tackle of number 26. Jake Wheels. Here's Artopius again, now on the left side. Tries to shed more tacklers, but they bring him down. Gain of one. Time taken away, under eight to go. Has some time across the middle of the field. And Ricketts making the grab. That duo has been clicking in the second half. Artopius to Ricketts. And really, very few of these snaps to Artopius are ideal off the left hip, off the right hip. But he has MTA made the adjustment. And that ball, a little high, but Hilo bounces it off his fingertips. Clock will stop, of course. Substitution by West Ranch, 53 checking in. Ethan Eichton, the junior. From the 28, they go back to Baker. Baker the ball player. Baker the workhorse. Well over 20 carries this evening. From the 21, third down, Artopius to his left. It's Augustine, Augustine with a nice move to shed a tackler. 
be a fast complete to Augustine. Artopius continuing to work both sides of the field and aided by Ricketts with that across the middle catch on the play before the last one. Opening things up a bit. Back to Baker on the ground. Baker looking for room. Most importantly, hanging on to the ball. At this point in the game, they can definitely not afford another turnover. We've got 6.27 to go and ticking down 15. Knocking on the door. Touchdown puts them right back in it. But mistakes need to be few and far between, if not at all, at this point in the ball game. Artopia is feeling the pass rush. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. Third and goal, ball at the five. Another impressive drive. This second half by the Lancers. Artopia is a quick throw and in pursuit is Jovan Camacho, but it looks like the grab was made or was it not? Waiting for the referee signal. So the pass is complete, but it's at the one yard line. Jovan Camacho tried to over pursue. Thought he had a chance at an interception. He did make the tackle. Nice reception. Look for Baker on this one. If not, another Artopius keeper. Here they go. They go to Baker. Baker trying to pound through the middle. Does he get in? West Ranch defense says no. And the West Ranch fans react. So they stop him, a huge stop on fourth down. Baker, who's given them tough yards all night, but look at this, sealing the gap, 36, and then running in from the outside. Who was that on the leg tackle? We can get a number there. Then Benicum was the first man to meet Baker. But boy, they got some pursuit late from the outside. And we mentioned mistakes can't be made, but also opportunities need to be capitalized on and can't serve them up any better than that one. Diagnosed with ADHD or a processing problem? Discover Brain Balance. Brain Balance delivers a promise of a better life for your child and your family. Huge things started to happen. There was major growth in her. It's been an amazing transformation. Find real help for your struggling child. Call 800 877 5500 or visit brainbalance.com. Back to live action, out of the end zone, Leron Huff. And there's a flag and the ball comes loose. So a whole lot of outcomes are on the table on this play. We'll await for the referees. They signal that it is Thousand Oaks ball. The flag flew at the beginning of the play. Leron Huff trying to break out of the end zone, avoid the safety, get the extra yards. So, wow. Interesting scenario right here as Huff loses the ball. Recovered by 35. Jack Bowen. Yeah. 
So the initial penalty was a holding in the end zone, which is an automatic safety because of the placement of the ball where the possession started. The quarterback back in the end zone out of the pocket. Huff ran it out of there. He did fumble the ball, but Thousand Oaks choosing to take the penalty and the points because, of course, with the safety, you also get the possession. So Thousand Oaks gets two points and the ball. The game's 41-28 with 5.21 to go. If you follow. I don't know if it's a bad decision. I just don't like it. If it's me, I don't think we're going to be able to take the ball at 25. Yeah, at 25. Just because it's going to take us time to watch this. So, huh? Was had a huge game with the three touchdown runs. That time trying to break another big one. But leaving another opportunity on the menu for the Lancers as they await the kick and another crack at the West Ranch defense. And got to give it up to them. Wow, that goal line stand moments ago after Artopius marched his team down the field again. Baker giving them tough, tough yards all night, but could not get over the goal line. West Ranch had the ball, a chance to put this game away, but instead, they've got to kick it to the Lancers. It's taken by number 24, who gets it close to midfield, that's Mike Crockett, the backup running back junior. So now in retrospect, if you think about Thousand Oaks taking the safety, if they had not taken the safety, had taken possession, it was a two possession game. This might not have been the right call because now they're 51 yards away. It's still a two possession game. Yes, it's a field goal and a touchdown game, but if there's any enemy left on the field, it's the clock to the Lancers as we get down to about five minutes to play. They want to score here. They need to do it quickly. 41-28. Artopius, four receivers spread out, looking for the sideline. He's got Freddie Ricketts, and Ricketts, full head of steam down the sideline, nearly gets past the last defender, but Jovan Camacho forces him out of bounds, and Freddie Ricketts, after a pretty quiet first half, has been the go-to guy in the second half. Last year's quarterback for this squad, now a receiver. They've got the transfer, Artopius, under center, out of the shotgun on this play. He looks to that sideline again for Ricketts. He airs it out, corner of the end zone, hand on it. Jovan Camacho on the coverage. Take a look at this. Artopius. Rick, it's been so reliable. And he really did throw it where at least Jovan could not intercept it. Tough, tough play to make in the corner of the end zone. Artopius cutting across the middle. He's a receiver. He looks that way. He's got Augustine. Augustine on his feet. Augustine with a touchdown saving ankle tackle from West Ranch by number 18. Jake Killingsworth, game of inches, folks, game of inches. As we saw with a goal line stand, and right there, if he doesn't get him by the shoestrings, most likely the big frame of Augustine would be barreling into the end zone. 4.05 and ticking to go. Artopius to his left. Artopius fires a little high out of the outstretched arms of his intended receiver, Troy Hilo. It does stop the clock. Second down. And Artobius 
Only about a three-step drop that time. Number 52 with a sack for the Wildcats. Giovanni Nicolazzo. Artopius across the middle again. Augustine perfectly played ball by number nine, Joseph Tempesta, who probably is having his best game of the season tonight. Because even though Augustine got his hands on it, when he went for the motion to pull the ball back into his chest, Tempesta was waiting and his body just knocked the ball out of the possession of Augustine and Augustine feeling it as he tries to get back to his feet. Only positive thing out of that play is the clock does stop. See in the background 3.22 to go but more importantly Augustine up on his own will. He's had a solid game tonight as well. 6'4", 223-pound senior. Nice big target for Chase Artopius. Facing another fourth down in the red zone. They were a yard away last drive and they couldn't deliver. Artopius looking right, fires. Ball short, excellent coverage by the secondary of West Ranch, and they stop another threat from Thousand Oaks. Now a 13 point lead with 317 to go. Artopius trying to lead his receiver, but of course, don't want to give up the INT as well. Just some really nice coverage by number two, Ryan Camacho. And number 26, Jake Wheels. Helping minimize that window at the end of the play. I guess he was better off taking the safety. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get it in anyway. Couldn't get it in. I guess if I was that coach, I might have got fired. <laughs> Colton Mitchell back on the field. Ryan Camacho, the ball carrier. So Camacho, probably because of his breakout game on the ground last week, earning some more carries tonight. They like to use him in the slot. And now, in the backfield. They'll stay on the ground. And breaking out of the back, Ryan Camacho. It'll be a foot race to the end zone. Being chased down by number 12. Ryan Camacho with a move at the end. And Ryan Camacho, who had a 100-yard game last week. But hold on, folks. They call that block in the back and it's a five yard. Because it looks like. Flag on the field will be a block in the back against West Ranch. He actually ran into the back of Yeah, the guy slowed up. The guy slowed up. You need to stop accelerating. Sometimes, yeah. See where that call came from. Ryan Camacho breaking out of the pack. Came late in the play. Let's see, we see it in that angle. Oh, there it is. Glasgow. Looks like running into him, but back to live action. They go right back to Ryan Camacho, and it's a touchdown nonetheless. So 
So it looks like he takes it in from about the 15 when it's all said and done. Two carries for nearly 80 yards on that drive for Ryan Camacho. Through the uprights. Make it 48-28. And now a daunting, nearly impossible task for Thousand Oaks. After they really made this a game in the third quarter. Now down 48-28 to with 2.22 on the clock. Prima Vista helping us out, out tonight. Prima Vista Tutoring Solutions. One-on-one -on -one group, in-home and online tutoring. Easy online booking, no upfront costs or cancellation fees. Here's the kickoff. Number two, Troy Hilo. Short return. Hilo on the return. Thousand Oaks offense back on the field. Artopius sideline to Baker takes it to the forty six. Artopi's on the run to Hilo. Gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Apollo's Barbershop, specializing in men's hair, sophistication with an edge. No one leaves Apollo's unsatisfied. Artopius working back over to Hilo, same sideline. Gets out of bounds. Clearly West Ranch in a bit of a prevent defense. One forty-four to go. Shotgun Artopius rolling right. Surveying the field, nothing doing, so he will. Run out of bounds on his own sideline. And Ricketts, I think he caught it and then he do a basketball move at the end between his legs and bring it back in. We saw the dribble off the snap earlier by Artopius. 
Hartopius, by the way, does play basketball. To his left. Complete to Hilo. That's Hilo racking up the reception numbers late in the ball game. Stepping up in the pocket, but losing the ball is Artopius and pouncing on it for the Wildcats. Is number 51, John Collier, the sophomore. That's a bit of a snapshot of what we've seen tonight. Artopius, the series of short completions. Moving his team down the field, but then just those mistakes. It seems so small, but they mount up. And you look up at the scoreboard, you gave Colton Mitchell and LaRon Huff and the Camacho brothers a chance, and it's 48-28. Staying on the ground to Ryan Camacho as we approach the minute mark. Thousand Oaks High, established in 1962. They do have former NFL wide receiver David Anderson as one of their alums. As time winds down, 30 seconds to go. And that'll be the last play they have to run. So, on homecoming night from Valencia High, the home team. The West Ranch Wildcats improved to 3-0 and on the year, taking care of the visitors, the Lancers of Thousand Oaks. Chase Artopius, a valiant comeback effort, especially in the third quarter for the Lancers. Finished with two TD passes, had a TD run, ran in a conversion, did have a costly in interception late in the game, however. Angel Baker, over 100 yards rushing, but on the other side, it's just... The continuation, the unleashing of these weapons for West Ranch. Colton Mitchell had a 34-yard touchdown run, a 66-yard catch and run by Jared Staub in the first half. LaRon Huff returns to action with three touchdown runs. Jovan and Ryan Camacho with a touchdown run each. The end result, 48-28. You look down the line, and this Wildcat team put up 55 in week one. 39 their second game, 48 tonight. It is a point machine to be reckoned with, and the defense, even though this team of Thousand Oaks got back into it in the third quarter, they arrived once again in the fourth quarter with a big goal line stand, some turnovers, and West Ranch showing they are a balanced football team, raising their helmets at the end to celebrate another victory. Up next for Thousand Oaks, September 29th. They got a bye week, so they don't play till then against Agora High. But West Ranch back in action September 22nd at Oak Park at 7 p.m. You're watching LivePlaySports.tv. We brought you this coverage here on Homecoming Nights. And it's a good one for the home team, the West Ranch Wildcats. Final score once again, 48 defeating the visiting Lancers of Thousand Oaks 28. I'm Patrick O'Sullivan signing off. Thank you for tuning in.